All right, let's look at another round of oaks that are that we see in Georgia now. Um, let's start off with the water oak. The water oak's scientific name is Quercus nigra. Okay. Um, within the water oak, it, it's pretty significant in the leaf shape. You got to be careful sometimes because you'll see, you know, a varying leaf shape, but for the most part, it's going to be what's called spatulate or shaped like a spatula. Other people will also say um, that it's shaped like a raindrop, okay? So you can see the raindrop shape right there um, in this water oak. Of course, when you look at the leaves, they're fairly stiff, but not of huge significance, but dark green on top, a lighter green on the bottom, um, and that's again Quercus nigra. Um, adapted to swampy areas, that's why it gets its name as water oak. Okay, up next we have the laurel oak. Okay, laurel oak, sometimes when you start looking at these, People want to confuse it with maybe a live oak, but you can see the leaf is larger than a live oak. Um, it does not have the rounded edges that the live oak has or the lighter underside. The leaves are typically bigger. Um, some people want to say it looks similar to willow oak, but the leaves are also wider. So for the laurel oak, Quercus laurifolia, when you're working with students or other people on tree ID, just make sure that you get Laurifolia. There are some other varieties that may confuse people, but Quercus laurifolia, the leaves are going to be lanceolate shaped, um, so thin at the top and thin at the bottom, shaped like a lance, um, and then broad um, in the middle, typically unlobed. Now, sometimes you will see maybe a little tooth in one of the laurel oaks, as you can see, kind of in this guy right here. Um, Every now and then it'll have a little hitch in the leaf margin that looks um, like what we would refer to as a toothed leaf margin. But laurel oak, Quercus laurifolia. Again, broad and unlobed and dark green on the top. The third oak we're going to look at is the blackjack oak. Pretty significant leaf shape here. Shouldn't be able to confuse this with many others. Um, as it's a very large leaf. The scientific name is going to be Quercus marlandica. Um, the leaves are broad and typically flare from a tapered base to a larger three-lobed bell shape. The way I tell people to remember this is the blackjack oak, like Blackjack's pirate ship, um, is bell-shaped and he rings his bell for dinner time. So the blackjack oak. They are dark green. These leaves actually remain attached to the twigs through the winter and the fall and then fall off right there near the end of the fall. Okay, so you'll be able to see these on the tree a little bit longer and denote that that's a blackjack oak. Quercus marlandica. Up next, the fourth oak we'll look at is called sawtooth oak. Again, a pretty easy to identify oak tree. Um, as you can see, this actually is not native to the U.S. Uh, it was brought here, but now is actually one of the more beneficial non-native species that we see because a lot of your deer hunters like to plant it for food for wildlife like deer. They love the acorns. They get to be pretty large. They have a, a dreadlock-shaped um, top to them with like small stringy pieces coming off of that. But when looking at the leaf, you can see a long slender leaf um, denoted by the bristled tips. These hairs right here that you can see are going to come out at the end of each vein. And of course when you look at it, the name Sawtooth Oak, it looks like it's a saw. Okay. Um, again, you can see the beginnings of an acorn right here, it will get a lot larger than this, um, but that would be what kind of the top looks like and these little stringy portions will get a little bit longer as they go and the acorn will um, come out. And again, a very popular white-tailed deer food, so a lot of people plant these um, in and around their food plots. Last but not least, we have willow oak, okay? 
Again, we've seen laurel oak, we've talked about live oak before, and we've seen water oak. Um, this is another one with kind of a slender leaf, but very thin. Now, many people um, are familiar with willow oaks because they're in landscape plantings, but this is a true wild willow oak, a very narrow leaf um, with, a, with an acuminate tip there. You can see the acorns, which will end up maturing, but stay pretty small on this. The willow oak scientific name is Quercus fellows. Um, some people want to get this confused with maybe a black willow, but the difference between the willow oak and the black willow is that the black willow actually has teeth in it. So, and typically a little bit darker of a leaf, but that, if you see teeth on the leaf, then you'll know that that's a black willow. Otherwise, it is more than likely a willow oak. Okay, so we've seen five more oak leaves here in this session. Again, it's important to remember that oaks in the white oak family, such as the white oak, the post oak, and the chestnut oak, have acorns on the current year's growth, meaning they grow and mature in one year. Now, some of the oaks that we've seen here are in the red oak family, such as the water oak, pictured here, okay? Um, and then we've got the laurel oak is also in the red oak family. Okay. The black jack oak is also in the red oak family. All right. And these, it's important to note that their acorns will, it takes them two years to grow and mature. So a perfect example of this is on going back to this willow oak. You can see the acorns down here on the second year's growth. New growth does not have acorns because it takes their acorns two years to grow and mature. Okay, so all red oaks in the red oak family, um, their acorns take two years to mature. And that's it for this session.